The following is a production of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Greenland's the kind of place where the second you step off of pavement is real wilderness out there. flying in and it's just like nothing but mountains and glaciers and snow and there was a lot of snow and it looked very very cold and daunting and it was like oh my god we're gonna go spend a bunch of time in a tent out there. <laughs> a surprising part about being in away was the first two weeks I was in camp I was like all I wanted to do was go to my favorite coffee shop get my computer on check my email and like get a big cup of coffee and eat a cinnamon roll and then after being there for about two weeks, I was like, God, that is the last thing I want to do. The project is just exactly the kind of research I like to do. I mean, it's in the Arctic, working on glaciers, looking at rocks. My, my background's all geology and, and geochemistry. We're sort of on an island in the Greenland ice sheet. Like there's glaciers on three sides of us and then on one side of us, there's this huge river. So we're pretty much you know, only accessible by a helicopter, or we had a boat system that worked for part of the summer. The Greenland ice sheet is melting at an accelerated pace. Glaciers come off of the ice sheet and transport huge quantities of ice from these high cold elevations down to the lower, warmer elevations. When the ice melts, it forms these huge lakes on top of the ice sheet. They form cracks in the ice and they actually drain these huge lakes to the base of the ice sheet. And then this water travels along the underside of the glacier and can actually physically lift up the entire ice sheet and move forward. We're using radon as a tracer for this water that's been in contact with the base of the ice sheet. In some rocks like granite, you have a lot of uranium and as it decays, it produces this radon gas that can build up in your basement or it can build up underneath an ice sheet. What we've developed is a probe that can detect different levels of radon in the water. We see these daily cycles of high radon and low radon that I think correlate to more and less interaction with the ice sheet base, which I think will correlate to faster and slower speeds of the glaciers coming off of the ice sheet. Sometime in late July, I got a phone call from my advisor back in Woods Hole. He was pretty excited and he told me that while I was out there, something like 98% of the surface of the Greenland ice sheet was melting at once for several days. What we'd been recording on the ground was part of this larger epic melting event. So now that I'm home, I'm extremely anxious to start analyzing my data and and see what this large-scale melting event is going to tell us about not only the Greenland ice sheet hydrology, but the Greenland ice sheet in general and how it moves and its behavior in the changing climate. To learn more about Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, visit us on the web at www.whoi.edu.